Here we have the Conso model 744R30. It's a 30 inch machine workspace. It's also available in a 20 inch workspace and a 12 inch workspace. In a different series, we have the 745R30, which is a double needle machine that's also available in a 30 inch workspace, a 20 inch workspace, and a 12 inch workspace. This is a walking foot machine is also known as a triple fee. So I'm going to demonstrate exactly what walking foot means. So we're going to focus here at the feed dog. I'm going to lift the pressure foot with a treadle. My treadle here, I have a pedal and we'll push down and we'll lift my pressure foot up high. And I, then I have a locking device here that I can come over and lock that in so that the pressure foot stays in an up position. So what we're going to focus on first is the feed dog. So as I turn the hand wheel, you'll notice the feed dog comes up above the needle plate. And then it travels to the back and then it drops down. Travels to the forward, comes back up. That is considered a drop feed. So you're going to have a feeding mechanism from the bottom that's going to pull the material through from bottom. Now we're going to focus on the needle itself. So as the, as the feed dog comes back up, you'll notice the needle goes down through the feed dog and the needle's going to travel with the feed dog as it goes back. So now we've got what is called a needle feed, which gives us both top and bottom feed. But in addition to that, we're going to let our pressure foot back down. We're going to look at the center foot. Center foot toe is this, and the outside foot toe is this. Now we're going to turn the hand wheel. We're going to take a look at the center foot. The center foot as it goes down, it actually lifts the rear foot. When it lifts the rear foot, the center foot travels with the needle and the feed dog, creating an additional feed for your top. So now you have a needle feed, you have the bottom drop feed, you have an alternating pressure feed with the center toe that's uh, feeding as your feet, the top feed. This is a this creates a lock stitch, uh, and it's a Federal Stitch 301. The machine is designed for extra heavy-duty sewing. A number of things, tarpoleums, webbing, and uh, we'll demonstrate some of the things that is sewn on the machine. So the 744R30 machine, the features is uh, we have a 30-inch workspace, the top casting is a one-piece casting comes out of one particular mold. There's no breaks in the middle. Same thing with the bed. It's a one-piece casting out of, out of one mold, which makes the machine extremely strong. The uh, large bobbin that we have down here, this is considered an extra large bobbin. And uh, it's a drop-in, so we can drop it in. Close it up here just by putting it in. If we had a two needle, we would have a two needle over here. This is the single needle that we're showing. It has a wick driven oiling system. So basically, we have some reservoirs that we actually fill up that's inside, but then it's considered to drive itself by some wicks. On the bottom here, we have the same type of oiling system, plus, we have a uh, reservoir that we fill up for the hook assembly with a micro valve adjustment for the oiling underneath. The, we have a reverse. We have the reverse uh, connected here uh, to a treadle, and which is uh, inside of the machine. So we have a, 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 a chain that goes up that connects to the reverse mechanism. So your reverse is actuated by, by your foot. And then, we, of course, we have the foot lift actuated by your foot here. And when we lift our pressure foot all the way up, we have a retaining holding piece that can hold the pressure foot in an up position. The clearance under the foot is 20 millimeters, or 25 30 seconds an inch. And you can actually see the sewing capacity. So here we are. We've already sewn through a number of layers of leather. Um, and we, we still have some clearance under the needle bar and the presser foot. It has a built-in bobble winder, which is pretty handy. It's right here on top. It has an automatic shutoff. 
Uh, you just uh, this one's full, but we basically just thread it, and when it's full, it pops itself off just like that. That's pretty handy. It's a little closer to the operator versus way down on the other side. The front hand wheel makes the uh, life a lot easier. Let's go ahead and let the presser foot back down. And uh, so instead of having to reach over to the large hand wheel, by the way, the large hand wheel changes uh, changes the uh, the ability to the torque. Uh, the larger the hand wheel, the more torque that you have from your motor. And uh, here we have a hand wheel. It's a spring loaded, and you can take it with one hand basically and turn the head back and forth without having to have to reach way over here like this. So the center hand wheel becomes really handy for the operator to be able to turn the machine over to raise the needle to, to thread it or whatever you're doing. This is very easy. Uh, both our, our double needle version and our single needle versions are designed on the same base casting on the, on the bottom. So we have the ability to, uh, to, if you want to convert this to a double needle machine or from a double needle to a single needle, the casting's already set up for the conversion. We have a safety clutch that's built in. A safety clutch release button is here. The safety clutch is on the back. So for whatever reason you break a needle or you jam up the hook, it's going to save those parts by disengaging this lower portion of the machine from the top portion. The top portion will continue to move, bottom portion doesn't. You clean out the thread or the broken needle and get that out of the way, then we can reset that right here with our reset button on the bed. We have a push button stitch regulator. So to engage your stitch regulator, we'll turn the hand wheel, push the hand, hand wheel in, we'll turn it until the, the button actually will engage into a slot. And there we go. Once it's in that slot, then we can turn, we can turn the hand wheel one direction or another to change your stitch length. That's how you change your stitch length. That's a super, super large, uh, long stitch length. That's around two, two stitches per inch. And uh, on the top shaft, because we have such a large shaft that actually, actually have to span the length of the machine, we use bearings to support those shafts. It's available with a rear puller that's mounted to the back of the machine. You can order this as a, an accessory. Uh, typically, people order the puller, it mounts in this direction. And you can put the puller here and an A needs in it. So we just add a P to the last. It's going to be 744R30P. And it mounts in this position right here. We can also put an automatic foot lift that would be mounted either on a chain or a solenoid that's here that can lift your press foot by, by off your treadle assembly without having to have a foot pedal and chain. And we can also put a, uh, a solenoid on the reverse for automatic reverse. So foot lift and automatic reverse is available as well. There's an adjustment here on the top that we can adjust very easily the pressure on the pressure foot. So if we're going to be doing thinner layers of material, we may want to loosen this up some. Thicker layers, we may need to compress it more. So that's an easy adjustment for, for that. Um, whenever we lift our pressure foot up, um, it, it, it gives it's very smooth. You can go all the way up as, as, as far as you can get. And uh, that's uh, uh, the adjustment here is, uh, excuse me, right here is the adjustment uh, for the uh, step. So we can actually change the position of this to change the relationship of the pressure feet from a small step to a large step just by moving it to the lower hall or upper hall. All right, so now that you have your new Conso 744R30, we're going to show you how to thread it. It's really easy to thread it. Just make sure you thread it correctly. I'm also going to set some tensions up that we're going to be sewing on here in a second. But the first thing you do is you want to take your bobbin out. So we'll clip that up. you got a fingernail long enough, you can get a finger under it. If you don't, just use a pair of scissors or something that you can get to it. So this is an extra large bobbin that we have here. And uh, 
what we want to do is when we put this back in, we want to make sure that it kind of goes in cross grain to a, uh, there's a little V cut that's behind this tension. Uh, right here's a tension. Let's point at, at that, see if we can get a look at that tension. There's the tension screw. This black piece here is the tension itself, and that's what holds the tension on. And the cut goes in this direction down. So now we're going to take the, put the bobbin in. We're going to go cross grain to that. So as we put the bobbin in here, as you can see, it's going to come back in this direction, and it's going to turn in this direction. So here we go. We're going to pop this in, and we're going to hold the bobbin tight, and we're going to pull it through the tension. Make sure that you try to get it all the way through that tension there. I'm going to just do this. You don't normally have to do this, but I'm going to push this down so that you can see where it really needs to end up at at the end of the day, because if it's not there, it's not going to give you any bobbin tension. So we're going to push it around the bobbin case opener so you can see where it really needs to kind of set in at. Let's see here. Uh, let's just push it around that. Whoop, let me get it. There we go. And we'll get this back here. So now got my tension here and now here we go so it's really stuck down in there normally once you get going it's going to end up down there anyway but I wanted you to see how that kind of goes in there now to set your tension we want a, a, a pretty pretty good steady pull here and uh, normally I say medium to heavy but on this machine if we know we're going to be doing some pretty heavy stuff so I'm going to say more on the medium heavy heavy side if that makes any sense so we want to pull here and we want to fill that and and if we want to adjust it a little bit tighter, we just take a screwdriver and run that screw in a little bit and get it tighter. Once we have this set, all the other tensions controls that you're going to be on the top side, everything's going to be on the top side. So that's how you do your bobbin. And we just leave the thread there just sitting there. It'll catch back up when we start sewing out of the way. Now, your top thread. The best thing to do is just let me thread it from the top here. Let's go ahead and cut the thread off here on top and uh, pull this on through, we're out. Now we got a fresh piece. If you notice, we've got some, got some body back here that, the, that, that, that remains from the spool. It kind of keeps it kind of wavering. And if we S-shape this through these holes and, and, and get a little, little make it so that it kind of goes around it, it'll, it'll in an S-shape like this and like this. You'll see how it ends up. See how it ends up there? This is going to help take some of that body because it just adds a little bit of tension. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to make a little S, S through here. And, and you see how it's starting to really help that. It's a very light tension here, but it's taking some of this body out. The next thing is we need to get around this tension here. It's a little awkward, but just make a loop, get it into the tension, pull it tight, and there we go. We're straight into the tension. Once we're in the tension, we're going to come around this piece at the bottom, which is a wheel. Go all the way back, catch this, and then we'll go into the pigtail, which is your check spring, and there we are. Right through there. Okay. Next, we're going to follow the guides upwards. So here's a guide here that we'll go across and in. And our take up is located here, so it's easy. It's got a little scoop here. It makes it a little easier to come through. And we'll go straight through here, all the way down, and like this. And now we've got a, a lower thread guide. Let me pull the needle bar down so you can see a little better. Now the lower thread thread guide. We're going to make sure that it gets all the way around there, and now it's in your lower thread guide here. Threading the needle, there's a scooped out place on the side of the needle that needs to go towards the, the bed of the machine to the arm area. And uh, we're going to thread from left to right, just like so. All right, so now we're going to start sewing on the machine. Uh, first thing, we want to lift your presser foot up. I've just got one simple layer here. Uh, normally, the machine would probably run through at least two layers of some small material like this. But I always say that when you start off with these machines, is you hold your top thread tight, 
just hold it right here, make a couple stitches, and you're good to go. Or what you can do is you can lift your presser foot up and you can bring it behind the presser foot and allow the presser foot to hold it. So once you get started here, uh, we've got to cut our power on and we can start sewing. So now we're going to start doubling up. There's uh, three layers that we're going to sew through. Oh, it's got a reverse pedal down here. I've got the reverse pedal set up. Uh, you can either have it in either location, but I like to have it on the outside one. But so we push our reverse down and use our left foot to control the machine. Not up back and forth, but I got a reverse here. Now we're at three layers. Let's go into a little bit thicker here. Here we're going to jump some seams. Here we're going to three layers to four or five. And then we're going to go double, triple that again. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll jump over the seam. Go back down. This is a common thing we're going to do is sew over a piece of webbing or something. That kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing there. Now here we've got We've already gone up to uh, 20 layers. Uh, it's actually pretty stiff now to, to turn it. Uh, so let's just go ahead and, and uh, bounce onto this and see what we come up with. Let's get started here. And as you can see, we can sew right over 20 layers. Now we're going to go do some different material here. Here's a piece of leather. Pretty nice uh, thickness. I've already been sewing over it some, so we're going to sew over it again. No problem. Okay. So now we're going to see if we can double up on top of this. Now we've already got about uh, 10 layers here is actually sewn inside here, so we're going to go back down to two layers. And uh, now we're going to add another couple layers to get started here of uh, just normal upholstery style leather. Now we're up there, let's go over to seam. So I think you're starting to get the idea now. Off. Here's a piece of webbing. This piece of webbing is a very thick piece of webbing. It's actually hard to actually fold. Uh, if you see how the body of it is here, I'm going to have to really push this down to get it folded. So let's uh, let's go from all this leather to a piece of of uh, webbing. Here. center hand wheel so we don't have to reach all the way over we can just grab this with a couple hands and we can lift the needle up without having to reach to the large hand wheel it makes it really pretty handy let's just go ahead and lift this on up a little bit more there we go now we're going to see if we get this tucked over oh, it's pretty heavy all right here we go In this now, see the thickness of this. But we need to put another piece on here, so. so here we go again. We've we've sewn uh, and sewn and sewn, and 
many, many layers. I've kind of lost count, but uh, I think we're going to get an idea here. So here's your webbing that I can hardly bend. It's sewn. And here is an countless amount of layers. And that is your 744R30 console machine.